Hi everyone, this is Jerry with San Pedro Mastery. This video and the following one coming up soon may be useful to those of you wanting to grow the San Pedro from seeds. San Pedro, but also its relatives in the Tucaceres family, as well as the peyote and others. Today I will talk about growing San Pedro seedlings with natural light outdoors, and very soon there will be another video about growing them indoors with either natural or artificial light. Let's first say this video does not explain the basics on how to grow the San Pedro from seeds. That I already showed in another video, which appears on the screen now. Today's video will be dedicated to those of you lucky enough to have a terrace or a garden and who are therefore able to grow their San Pedro seedlings outside. The way you can grow your San Pedro seedlings will depend on where you live. If you live in a warm place like here in Barcelona and you have a terrace or a garden, then I highly recommend growing them outdoors. If you live in a colder country, you can still grow them outside if you have a terrace or a garden, but only for a few months. Your main issue is going to be the temperatures. You need to keep that soil at the very least at 25 degrees Celsius, that's 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and much preferably at 30 degrees or more. 30 degrees Celsius is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. If the weather does not quite reach these temperatures, you can use a heated mat. A cactus does not care about the temperature of the air around it. It cares about the temperature of the soil, which is why a heated mat can be of great help. Just be careful about using electricals outside. Don't take any risk of electrocution. Heated mats typically raise temperature by about 10 degrees Celsius, or 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure you put a piece of insulation foam between the mat and the floor, or the mat and the table, so that you don't lose heat. You should put the mat on a timer in order to match with the hours of daylight. Do not leave the mat on at night as the cacti prefer to have cold roots during that time. I have two terraces, one of them south facing, which has sun all day, and the other one north facing, which is more shady. I grow cactus seedlings on both terraces and I will now show you how that works out for me. In the south facing terrace, they are in the sun for most of the day. That is way too much light for them, since seedlings of less than one year have very low light requirements. So I have placed some shading on top of the trays. I have used some green shade cloth like this one, which comes in rolls and you can buy at garden stores. They sell them in different shade percentages. You want a high one, 70% or above, depending on how strong the sun is where you live, and also depending on how reliable the shade percentage is. Very often they are not. The one you can see now is a very cheap one rated at 70%. I don't believe at all this rating and I think it's closer to 40 or 50%. This one here is a slightly more expensive shade cloth, let's say mid-price. It's rated at 85%. It is ideal for the spring and autumn here in Barcelona. Note that I've zip tied the green shade cloth to a metal frame, which is actually a section of garden fence made of powder coated metal wire. You can buy these in hardware stores. But during the summer, I actually use a combination of that better quality 85% shade together with a cheaper 70% shade, which is probably more like a 40 or 50% shade. This is because I'm always looking for the best possible color and appearance for my seedlings. You probably don't have to go through that much trouble yourself. Just put a rag on top of it or some green shade cloth and if need be, you can always use a thicker rag or put a second layer of the same green shade cloth. Note that the garden fence is factory stamped in a way that it is V-shaped on the sides. When I place that frame on top of my trays, there is a two inch gap which allows for some air circulation. Good air circulation will mean less problems with bugs, as fungi gnats, thrips, red spider mites and other pests like the combination of high temperatures and poor air circulations. This 2 inch gap allows for some air circulation, but I found better results by lifting the frame on one of the sides, the side opposite to the sun, which allows for some more air to pass. Just wedge something in there in a way that it cannot be knocked off by the wind and fall onto the fragile seedlings. Also, I found out that if I put my trays on the floor without a table, there is less air passing there as if they were on a table mostly because of the walls on my terrace. 
I have better air circulation if I raise the trays to a level close to the top of my walls. How much shade should you be using? It's a trial and error process. You can start off with a rag that lets a lot of light pass through and you can always replace it by a slightly more opaque rag if your plants are getting red. The setup you see on this photo is half of my seedlings. The other half is in my other terrace and like I mentioned earlier, it is permanently in the shade, not covered. There is nothing above the plants except the sky, but the table is placed close to the wall which puts it in permanent shade. How do they grow in the shade? Just as well as in the other terrace. And I don't have to cover them with any type of shading, so there is much better air circulation. Growing cactus seedling outdoors has a few advantages over growing them indoors. Let me tell you what they are. Advantage number one is the temperature drop. One of the main factors for boosting growth on the San Pedro is the temperature drop at night and you get a much stronger drop outdoors than you would get inside your house. Advantage number two is better air circulation. Once you remove the cling film that encloses your tray at the beginning, air circulation outdoors will keep your plants healthy. And by that, I mean free of bugs, mold and algae. Advantage number three, exposure to the sun. The plants will be tougher, already used to the sun, although it's filtered, which will make the transition to exposure to full sun much easier. Advantage number four, rainwater. It's the best water for them, apart from using bottled drinking water, which will be just as good. If it rains too much for too long, or if it rains too hard, like raining cats and dogs, then you can protect them by either moving them inside, or doing like I did in this picture, I've wrapped my shading frame in cling film, it's called sand wrap in the US, and I position the frame at an angle so that water can slide off. Advantage number five is lower electricity costs. You don't have to pay for the electricity of running fluorescent tubes, though admittedly this is not a very high expense, as fluorescent tubes, especially the T5s, are very energy efficient. In a forthcoming video, we'll talk about growing the San Pedro seedlings indoors, which can perfectly be combined with growing them outdoors. You could do a couple of months outdoors and then the rest of the time indoors. Obviously, if you don't have a garden or terrace, you can perfectly do it all indoors, either in front of a window or under artificial lights. And this is what we will discuss soon in another video. That's it for today. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please write them down below. And remember that if you want to buy true San Pedro seeds, it is essential to make sure that these are hand pollinated and that both parents are indeed Trichocerus pacanoi. The huge majority of pacanoi seeds you can buy from smart shops and even cactus specialists are not pacanoi. They are not San Pedro. This is explained in my video why most San Pedro seeds are a ripoff. Check it out if you haven't. That's me signing off. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Like this, you will be supporting my channel and help it grow. See you next week.